and welcome. We're in my office this time instead of over in the sanctuary space, as there have been a number of changes here at Beautiful Savior yet again. And as we go through some of these changes, wanted to take some time to walk you through them and explain maybe a little bit more if there were some questions or if you had some things that you weren't clear about. And hopefully this video will be able to explain what this looks like. Because as we go forward, there are more changes and we don't want to offend people, but this means there's a number of different health and safety rules that we have to follow. The first thing I want to cover is that we are now going to be attempting an in-person worship service. This worship service will be at 1030 on Sunday mornings. If you're interested in that, you should have received an email or seen the newsletter that talks about what's going on. To register, there's a few questions you first have to ask. First, you need to go through and check if you're doing all right. Is your household doing all right? Is anyone sick? Is anyone not feeling well? If you're all feeling well, you can then go and make sure that you have a face covering. We're going to be requiring face coverings at our worship services. If you're on site, you need to wear one. If you don't think you can wear a face mask, if you're unable to, you probably won't be able to make this because you need to wear it for the entire service, both when you get out of your car all the way to when you get back into your car. We're gonna to aim to keep these services shorter than normal, but that's still a good 30 to 45 minutes of having to wear a face mask. So we wanted to give you a heads up on that. If then you're still okay and you're still wanting to attend and still able to attend, you then also have to ask yourself the question, are you considered at risk? Are you considered well enough by the state, the CDC, the local government? Because there are a number of people that are considered at risk and unable to attend services, to go out and be in different things where they're telling you to still wait and hold tight because we're still just in phase two of this pandemic. If you hear that and you still want to go, even if you are in those conditions, <clears throat> then we would like you to contact the office. Let Keisha know by Thursday that you would like to attend this service. This is for a number of reasons. First of all, we only have a very limited number of spaces that we can have. As people need to sit six feet apart from those that don't live in the same house as them, we only have nine pews that people can sit in. And so, we need to know who's there, and we need to know if we need to turn someone away, who is on the list of those that did sign up. This means that if you don't sign up, you might not be able to be in our in-person worship service. We want to let you know, though, that we will be continuing to have our 9 a.m. service, as well as we are going to be working on having this live streamed, so that you can see what this service looks like, as it's going to be a bit different than what our other services have looked like. And so... If you're all set, you've gotten the okay from Keisha that you were on the list, and it's now Sunday morning, you can now make your way and figure out what it will look like when you get here. When you arrive with your face mask, we're asking that you again do another safety and health check. If you're feeling sick in any way, if you don't feel safe with being here, if you're nervous at all, please do not attend. If you've already registered and you don't attend, that's fine. But when you get here, we're asking that you do not arrive too early. Arrive maybe 15 minutes early at most. This gives us enough time to make sure everything is set up as we're gonna have a few different procedures that we have to follow. And we will not be having any coffee served. We will not be having any fellowship time. It is very much a service and that's it. When you get here, there will be markers all along the ground letting you know where six feet is to line up as we will be doing a health and safety and temperature check when you get into the church. This is again just to make sure that people do have their masks. If you, do, if you need one, we have extra at the ready and that we can make sure that everyone understands what is going on. The doors and windows will all be going, fans will be running to make sure there is air circulation. And it might take a bit of time after we have everything set up to make sure we have everyone seated. So there might be more than that time that I said it would take because what will then take place is people will be sitting at the very first open pew. These are the pews that do not have cushions in them. We took off the cushions both to make it easier for you to see which ones you can sit in, easier to clean, and easier to disinfect. It also gives us the chance to polish those pews that haven't been polished in a while underneath those cushions. And so we encourage you not to touch the cushions, not to touch the pillows that we have with us, but to take that seat 
on either end, depending on the size of your family. If you do have a family of those living in your household, they can certainly sit with you. But we're asking again, if you do not live in the same household, that you do not sit in the same pew and with each other. When it comes time to the service itself, there will be no Bibles, no bulletins, no handouts, no copy, unless you brought your own. We're going to not be sharing the peace. We're going to be asking people to stay in that pew that they are in. We will have a lineup for if you need to use the bathroom on where that line will be. Markers will indicate this as well. Singing will be at an absolute minimum, meaning that there will be only one song the congregation will sing with. And we will be having appointed singers that will not be in the space that others will be around, as singing is one of the greatest ways that this virus is spreaded and creates more, ha more harm for those that are singing. And so we are working with the elders and those that are helping with worship to try and reduce the number of songs so that we do not put you or those that are helping out with worship at risk. When it comes time to finish our service and we have more of a time of meditative and reflective listening to God's word and hearing what it has to say to us, we will then be continuing with knowing that God is the one who is in control and when we enter into our time of prayer. There will be more interaction in certain other ways where you get to be involved with letting us know your prayer request. You're there in person. And we're going to be watching with you actually flows out. We will not be having communion. That will be touched on in another video or right after this video, depending on how I edit it. And after we're done, we're asking you to remain seated until you are ushered out. Just as we have people going in and taking the very first open pew, we will be having people leave at the very last pew and working towards the front. This keeps social distancing to the utmost and not having people crossing paths. We're asking that you do not have a long time of fellowship if you do decide to greet people. We ask that you do that out in the parking lot where it's out in the open and the open air. Again, coffee will not be served. There will be no Bible study that we have planned at this time. And we're asking that even when you're out in the parking lot, that you keep your face mask on, that you keep social distancing, and that you stay with the people that you drove with. You stay in the car that was your household only. I know this is gonna be a odd thing for many of us as this isn't quite what we're used to and many people in many churches are expecting to go back to normal. We're not there yet. And so this is going to be a time where we're gonna be working towards what does it mean to have an online stream service at the same time of being able to meet back again in the building. And so just wanted to take those times. If you do have any questions, please, Email us, call us, and we will be able to try and help you sort through these things. And so thank you so much as you bear with us as we go through this new step and continue on with this. God's blessings. Another one of the changes that we're excited to share with you is that we are now hosting outdoor reception of Holy Communion. We know it's been some time since you have received Holy Communion, but now we are able to do this with some slight modifications. One of them, as I mentioned, is that it's going to be outdoors. We will be holding this under the breezeway. The other is that this will be scheduled by family and by household. So if you would like to receive Holy Communion, we are asking that you schedule with Keisha as we will be holding these on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And so when you call her, she will go through and talk through some of the health and safety things that you need to know, like wearing a mask and checking to see any preferences that you do have and anything that we need to know about at this time. When you do arrive, we're gonna be requiring that face mask to be worn until it's that time for you to receive. When you schedule, you can schedule with as many people in your household and family that you would like, but you have to let us know who is going to be there. This means that if your family doesn't live in the same household, they can schedule with you at the same time. If you have grandparents, if you have grandkids, if you have parents that live in different households, we are just requiring that you stay six feet apart. There will be a different table that is coming forward to the altar that we're having outside. But at the same time, you are there at the same time together, keeping your social distance. When it comes forward to this time, we are also looking and saying, that there is some other stipulations that we're gonna be having. 
we're going to keep this as short as we can, and it's going to be following a order of reception for the sick and the homebound. We sent this out so that you have an idea of what this looks like, but it again gives that wonderful news that you get to have a time in worship being fed and nourished by God as we come before God hearing his wonderful word. And the final thing as you look forward to this, as we look to these many changes, and as you look to receiving communion, is this something you can schedule as often as you, de you desire. As often as you would like, you can make sure that you schedule on these Tuesdays and Saturdays. We've been joking to say that this is something, if you would like that, you can have this now twice a week instead of the every other week that we've been having. We look to this and say that just as we confess that we are only right and proper to, concede, to receive this when we realize that it is given and shed for you. And so we also ask that you reflect upon that given and shed body and blood of our Lord and Savior when you come forward to communion, realizing that it is not because of what you have done, but because of what he has done, that you receive this wonderful gift. If you have other questions, we'd ask that you would continue to let us know, email us, or call Keach in the office. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.